and now uh, next to our last but uh, the probably the most important <laughs> keynote lecture for this course our very dear friend dr leela mohan <laughs> thank you madam thank you dr vaishali for giving me the space in fact i would have loved to sit here and listen to all these stalwarts vasavada dr vasavada uh, i have seen him put him put all what he is teaching into practice uh, being with him there so my teacher uh, and uh, uh, he gave me the courage to do some parts plana vitrectomy which i don't routinely do but i uh, i started after uh, seeing him and uh, though all dr meenachi dr jagadram uh, probably may not know that i have been learning from all of you <laughs> over the uh, over the past years i don't know what more i am going to add to from whatever we have heard here but i'll just present whatever i have learned from them <laughs> so uh, 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 there is nothing more updated <laughs> in fact so over the years uh, from 70s to 2000 lot of things uh, viscoelastic posterior capsulectomy vitrectomy uh ccc newer iols and triamcinolone assisted vitrectomy and uh, all have made iol implantation possible in younger children but uh, uh, further the goal of surgery of course we know is clearing the visual axis for the retina to mature but further follow up of visual axis opacification iop refraction of the growing eye and isometropic amblyopia or all are the our uh, unpredictable challenges and all most of these all the gray areas have been discussed in detail well, how early to implant an iol whether uh, what to do for visual axis opacification and whether we should do anterior vitrectomy at all and iol power calculation and the whether premium lenses are advisable so uh, it may all come down to timing as we have already said the child loses one line of visual acuity for every 3 weeks that the surgery is delayed in the first 14 years of life 14 weeks of life and unilateral cataracts are best operated as we know at 6 weeks and bilateral by 8 uh, to 10 weeks and once nystagma sets in in uh, um, uh, by a delay beyond 3 months visual outcomes are poor and we know that aggressive patching can improve even in uh, uh, unilateral cases and uh, of course uh, we know that even unilateral and bilateral cases nowadays infection has a very big brunt on the causative uh, uh, issues uh, though genetics of course is 25% and uh, it used to be rubella on the uh, holding upper hand but we have seen uh, that cmv is coming up nowadays and in spite of government efforts to control congenital rubella syndrome it is a persistent public health problem in india now and uh, studies have from lvpi dr ramesh uh, and uh, dr vivek all uh, have shown that cmv has a big role and th that 33% of the causative factors in infections and in our study also we have seen from 2012 to 2017 uh, cmv has become the major uh, infectious cause rather than rubella and of course the associated microphthalmia corneal opacity glaucoma and anesthesia of course uh, has a uh, very big uh, uh, um, uh, uh, issue also surgery may be have to be done within a day or two after cardiac surgery and modern safe anesthesia has made yes. surgery possible but we have to keep in mind about the hypothermia hyperthermia all these problems can occur and may need an icu management which uh, uh, we have to do and ophthalmic evaluation of course has already pointed out the uh, recent intraoperative oct may be useful in knowing the integrity of the posterior capsule and mitral lenticular interface dysgenesis and plan surgery accordingly and all others of course uh, in uh, in uh, assessing and deciding whether iol can be implanted or not and surgical issues uh, uh, already discussed here anterior capsular excess in a closed chamber with drip and blue and viscoelastics uh, and nowadays the intracameral use of epinephrine e epinephrine has made it e easier when the pupil comes down and uh, rubella cataract with a uh, microphthalmic eye and small pupil the calcific capsule can be uh, uh, sometimes it may have to be removed also with the forceps but uh, anterior and posterior vitrector excess may have to be done in these cases and other methods for precision in capsular excess 
are zeptorexes, which I'm not very fond of uh, in children. Even in the older people, I'm not very comfortable with that. But uh, it is said that even in small people, it can be done. And femtorexis, as already pointed out by Dr. Vaishali, that uh, the both anterior and posterior exes have to be uh, of the same size, but uh, some correction factors have to be made for the enlargement of the rexes, which can occur in the elastic capsule. And in the bag, uh, a bag in the lens cap may be better done with the femtorexis. So this is from, uh, through a limbal approach with a 23 gauge vitrector, but uh, it can be done past planar too, especially in microphthalmic eyes where we are not planning for an IOL. And uh, CME, uh, though not documented, uh, it's not a common, uh, it's not common by FFA studies by, as shown by Morgan et al. And uh, after vitrectomy, uh, I forgot to, so I don't want to waste more time. The conventional PPC with anterior vitrectomy uh, versus posterior optic catcher, as we have already discussed, uh, uh, randomized control trials have been done in India by Dr. Vasudha <laughs> and also Dr. Sukhija, Dr. Jagatram, showing that uh, comparable results have been uh, 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 are there even without vitrectomy. So that may be the conventional method in future. We don't know because implications of doing a, uh, doing vitrectomy in that early uh, uh, period has been well highlighted. Uh, I've heard um, uh, uh, Dr. Vaishali speak on that extensively before. So we don't know that that may be the way to go. Bag in the lens uh, is another way to prevent uh, visual axis of pacification. Uh, and uh, where the anterior and posterior leaflet, leaflets of the capsule are tucked into the groove of the lens. And the role of uh, central uh, corneal thic uh, cor thickness. FAK guys, as we have seen, has shown to be, have an increased CCT as compared to those who had primary IOL implantation. In all the studies, the role of vitreous factors which might alter the microstructure of cornea and angle are still not known. They may play a role on glo in glaucoma development, and there may be a false increase in glaucoma also, diagno uh, glaucoma diagnosis, if this is not taken into consideration. A lot of studies have done uh, uh, on this, but uh, not extensively. We don't know much about it, uh, whether the vitreous uh, vitrectomy has a role on that. And uh, we have already seen uh, unilateral cataracts, primary IOL implantation in unilateral cataract is to prevent periods of FA kick vision. So though IATS has shown uh, that uh, rec um, uh, membrane formation and resurgery had to be done, long-term outcome was similar and compliance uh, with contact lens as they have uh, used about nine to 11 contact lenses in a year, which was provided by the study, which is not possible in our situation. So probably contact, uh, we may have to consider IOL implantation in a normally formed eye with the normal parameters of cornea and, and, uh, uh, and uh, anterior and posterior segment. So uh, as Dr. Vasavada has ex had already pointed out and Dr. Jagatram was saying that posterior plaque, I believe also that it is due to uh, um, posterior, uh, posterior capsular opacities and posterior plaques may be due to uh, PH, uh, PFV. <laughs> Um, and uh, we have seen in uh, unilateral microphthalmic uh, eyes, um, uh, about 60% of them are due to PFV, and posterior capsular plaques are seen in 60% of these microphthalmic uh, unilateral cataracts. So a uh, good outcome has been possible in most of the anterior forms, where uh, this is a, a single-piece IOL. Uh, I would prefer also sing, uh, multi-piece IOL to capture, but this here, I have done a um, uh, single piece with posterior capture. And primary IOL implantation is possible in most of these cases. And if there is a heavy vascularization, this is a retinal endocautery being used, which is very useful to prevent bleeding. Uh, and most of these cases, when it is very vascular, previously I used to ask the posterior segment surgeon to t take over. Uh, but na now with the endocautery, uh, we are, I am doing it. So uh, posterior uh, uh, persistent uh, fetal vasculature, of course, we have to do an extensive uh, detailed examination and uh, it is better tackled by the posterior segment surgeon if it is very vascular. And uh, 
whether IOL or not, as an extension of IATS, we know that the toddler aphakia and pseudo aphakia studies have come up. TAP study has shown that IOL is a safe option in unilateral and bilateral cases above six months with low visual axis of pacification and glaucoma. A study on 100 eyes of infants by Sukhita et al. and Dr. Jagatram, as we have seen, is a safe, has been shown to be safe and from LVPI also. Of course, IOL power calculation and we have been already uh, <laughs> discussed in uh, detail and which IOLs can be used, single or multi-piece, hydrophobic the best and multifocals are best avoided during amblyogenic years and toric IOLs may be considered in the older children if it is possible. Uh, and secondary procedures, uh, uh, the age of uh, secondary IOL uh, uh, should be customized according to whether the patient is using FAK glasses or not. And three-piece hydrophobic IOL with optic catcher will be the ideal. And membranectomy, glaucoma, strabismus surgery, all will have to be considered over the years. And uh, uh, large anisometropic myopia with a very large anisometropia, sometimes IOL exchange may have to be done. And whether uh, primary IOL implantation protects against glaucoma, there are various studies showing conflicting results in the 10-year follow-up of TAPS. Sorry. Uh, 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 both groups have shown that an incidence of 23% glaucoma, irrespective of whether it was primary IOL implantation of, or FAKX. So whether it is the barrow trauma to the immature angle at the time of surgery, whether it is due to vitrectomy and vitreous disturbances, uh, all these have to be uh, followed up and follow up with ASOCT might help in answer answering some of these questions uh, in the long run. And of course, as everybody has stressed upon, the follow up is the most, most very important, most important factor. And even before planning surgery, we have to tell them unless you come for follow-up, there is no point doing surgery, clearing the media. So uh, all these have to be seen at each visit, a red reflex is essential, fundus, slit lamp, visual acuity, refraction, and axial length and corneal diameter, if necessary, I, I, examination under anesthesia. And a good chair time during counseling, during each time they visit you after surgery is very, very important to uh, uh, make them come for follow-up. This is uh, what I have seen because uh, uh, over uh, in Malabar, where I stay in Kerala, there, is a, there are a lot of people coming from Gulf and they do surgery and just disappear. So it's a pity when they come back with a lot of these problems. So uh, it has to be stressed. The follow-up is the most important. Each time you have to stress the importance of follow-up. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question. When, <laughs> the, when, when they disappear, when they disappear, when they, they come back, no, no, just, this is a lighter side. They when, when, this is a lighter <laughs> side. When they appear, do they bring some gold with them? <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so thank you, Dr. Leela. This was, uh, I think, all in all, I had a very good time during this course, and I thank you all for being with us uh, throughout uh, on this last session of a nice Friday evening in Bombay. And thank, I cannot thank my faculty enough for uh, agreeing to be part of this and teaching us so much. So thank you all. And I think a special shout out to the person who was managing this hall. In the world, I have never seen anywhere somebody serving you coffee, like asking her you. So this is, I think, hats off to the LOC and hats off to him. Thank you so much. I think he's the best person who has. I think <laughs> for the first time I have seen in any of the hundreds, uh, more than 500 conferences, I have seen, I think he's the first person who offered a tea. And in Bombay, it is a big that thing. Also, even in Bombay. Even in Bombay. <laughs> no, but I just, before we, because we already over two questions, two more. I want to give Dr. Jagatram to say a final two, three, four lines of course of wisdom on pediatric cataract surgery. Uh, you're done. You're the most. Uh, no, no, no. I, I, I think I, I, I consider uh, Dr. Abhay Vasavada my teacher and my guru and mentor. And he's inspirational for me. Uh, whatever I have learned. What I can say that uh, uh, young children, particularly less than uh, six months of age, we have to be extremely careful. Uh, and uh, whatever. Uh, 
very selectively one may implant in some cases but not uh, as uh, Dr. Uh, Vaishali Vazhavada said, I think we should follow that. That is one. Second thing is microphthalmic I do not use IOL. That is another. Third thing is surgery is the first step. Follow-up is important. Counseling is extremely important. And most important thing is that these children, uh, they have squint as uh, Dr. Minakshi also emphasized. We have to highlight that which we ignore most of the time. And parents will say, uh, say that uh, this squint has appeared after cataract surgery. And uh, our another uh, speaker, uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Varshini also very rightly said the uh, patching, uh, that, that is extremely important, amblyopia therapy. That is extremely imp uh, important. I think uh, otherwise vision will not develop in these uh, uh, particularly unilateral eye and sometime even in bilateral eye if there is a anisometropia. Uh, so I think this was excellent uh, instruction course. I am thankful to Dr. Vaishali Vasavada and uh, Dr. Abhay Vasavada for giving me opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank and uh, thanks to the audience. They are here till last.